Welcome to What's Your Story by Gabby. Now I'm joined by Narao Kimani Laser. Narao, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Gabby, for having me today. So, Narao, we met in November 2018, and now it's February 2024. So we met just over five years ago. Is that right? Perfect. Perfect. And when we met, I think you were around 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And you told, me, you told me your story that you, um, you escaped your, your family village to get educated. Is that mm-hmm. correct? Yeah, and, and, correct. And in, fact, in fact, you wanted to be a, 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 a medical doctor. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. That was my big wish since I was and, very young. And tell me, Nara, what's happened since we spoke five and a half years ago? Yeah, so um, since we uh, we met on 2018, um, I actually went to school to join uh, the College of Wildlife uh, Management, and I started uh, the the course of wildlife conservation. And from there, um, I was to become actually a, a women doctor, but I just felt to get some of the support to get there. So I decided uh, to get to the college to start much about the nature as I'm also born from the nature, from the Maasai community. And that is where I just um, developed a new vision of me. And I just say like, yeah. So now because I can't make this becoming a human doctor, I have to see, yeah, uh, how can I get like, you you know, sometimes you can be not uh, in a position to be helped but at least you can find another way to make sure that you can uh, make other co- other people, other young one, to make sure they can get at least and get to their dreams. So uh, I I went to start the wildlife conservation, and after that I get back to my community uh, and I just stay to the village, and I got some of the problems with my family like. They want me to be married. I, I get out of the family. And then after that, I have been married now with the one of the Maasai men. And um, after that, I stayed at the village because I don't actually have a job. And I, I see a lot of uh, difficulties, a lot of uh, things that girls are facing and also women are facing, Maasai women. So uh, what happened is uh, during that time, um, I couldn't go on with school and now I'm married and I see how the young one are struggling to get education. They don't have support. I thought like, yeah, I have to do something to my community. I also know that now I'm married at this age just because I did not have any support, my my people did not also have um, a good a good view about education. So I just thought like, because of this, I have to start uh, to make this official by uh, registering the organization that will just mandate or focus much on helping the young Maasai girls and uh, helping the women, Maasai women, uh, to empower them economically, because by empowering the Maasai women, they can also help their kids to get to school. It's not necessarily that um, I will support everyone in the community, but at least by touching these women, they can just also help their kids to school. And some of the uh, of the kids that will get a chance to be supported by uh, the organization will also have a a big pleasure that we can fight to them until they reach their dreams. As you know, in our community, uh, education to a girl is not a priority and girls are just left behind to be married. And when it reach like the age of 15, uh, 11 years old, you have to be married by um, a husband. Age to... 11. Yeah, it is from 8 to 11. From you have eight to, to eleven. Yes, you have to be married. They, by a, child, a child can be married at the age of eight. Yes, yes. Trust me, that is what it happened. So normally, like eight to eleven years old, 
you have to be married. You know what happened, Gabby? Uh, I think you were just wondering about the age of eight. But you know what Masai did? Like, you are to, you, 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 you are to be married, you go to your husband's side. No matter the husband is not going to be with you, but you grow there until you reach the age of 10 to 11. That is where you start to sleep with your husband. So sometime also, it happened that a young girl is married and not able maybe to sleep with a husband, wherever, but they go and grow there. When it reached the time that, yeah, the husband is ready to sleep with the wife and then they, they start to do that. So but that that didn't happen to you, though. Is that right? Yeah, it did not happen to me. It did not happen to me. But why, I watched this because... Why, why? why didn't I, it happen to you? Yeah, this did not happen to, to me because uh, I got the opportunity to join the primary uh, school. And through my primary education, uh, when I was done with class seven, um, I went to my class teacher because I was to be married uh, when I was in class six. And then I, w I went to my class teacher and I told her that, you know, my, my, my dad wants to give me a husband. And my primary teacher told me like, no, you don't have to be married. You have to, to make sure that you fight and then you, you go to, to school. So and your, I told, teacher, how can I do that? How can teacher I do that? saved you from, from, from marriage. By, yes, my, my teacher are, are you, said... Are you grateful to your teacher for that? Very, very grateful. Very grateful. And That's subsequently, you, 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 you got educated and you got married two years ago. Is that right? Yes. Like uh, two, two years, like not yet two years, but um, it's almost one year and a half. How old were you when you got married? I was 24. 24. And now yes. you have a child? And now I have a child, one year old, Lemaya. A boy? A boy? Yes, a boy, a boy. What's his name? A Masai Sojan, Lamayan. Lamayan, Masai yes. Sojan, congratulations. Thank how, you so much, Gabby. How are you finding motherhood? Yeah, yeah. so motherhood is um, a bit um, challenging to some point, but it's very, very good, like... You have a friend, all time friend, a person who really needs you every time. Every time needs your attention, needs everything from you. So this developed me uh, another spirit, and I guess this uh, the kid drives me to live another life that I ever live, taking yes. care of him. And is your is your family supporting you with with the kid? No, no, no. My family is not supporting me anymore. Like now I'm married. So uh, it's my family, uh, my husband's family are the one to take care of me. And how did you meet your husband? Yeah, so I met my husband um, when I was in, uh, when I was in the college. And that is where we were just friends. And then with this peer pressure of being married with somebody that my dad was giving me, an old man, that is where we developed a spirit like, yeah, this was not the time to be married, but just to rescue me from that situation, we got married. So your father wanted you to marry an older man when you were very young? Yes. And you, 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 you avoided that, and now, but now you married a friend of yours but you did you get married to avoid because of peer pressure? Yes, that is the thing. Yeah, I just got married because of the peer pressure, just to avoid that, to avoid uh, being uh, married with somebody I did not like to be married with. And oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, that is how it is to me. That is how that is what happened. That is really what happened. And it's just that I developed this spirit because otherwise I could have run uh, a lot of time out of home. But the problem was, where can I go without my parents? I know they are not educated at all. Uh, they are people that they can track me anywhere on social media as they are not familiar at all. But the, the big problem with me was like, these are my parents. 
and wherever they are doing is just because they don't have uh, education that is why they are doing and this what they are doing to me is something that is not good to me emotionally and everything but i understand that but there is no anywhere i can go without them because yeah i'm just their kid wherever they are but i i have always have to be their kid so i just decided to do that for their happiness it, it, it sounds very understanding from, yeah that's that's uh shows a lot of strength in your character yeah tell me nara tell me about the poster very quickly behind you what what is that what is this yeah so what you see behind me is uh um, the uh the bango that shows the endwater community initiative organization uh that is initially i'm the co-founder of it and i just found it because of the challenges i have been passing through and the challenges i'm still observing on my village recently that the girls have no uh, right to education they are still married in in a very very young age and they are facing a lot of challenges big big challenges that they don't deserve to do that but just because our parents are not familiar of these things the impact of affecting us um, affecting us they don't understand that and they don't see that this is a big problem to them so i decided to support the girls and women to make sure that they also have right in the community as we don't really have any power in any kind of decision to be made to a masai women in our community how long have you been involved with this charity yes it's almost uh, now it's almost one year because Amazing. i have been working with uh, some of the organization uh helping them also to educate the kids to motivate the kids no matter what challenges they are facing they always have to focus to make sure they reach somewhere sometimes it's very hard to reach exactly dream you have but at least you reach somewhere that you can you are not going to be uh, depend you are not going to depend on somebody at least you can always help yourself with some of the things yeah okay. so by working with this organization uh by almost now a year doing this kind of community work helping work brilliant i i mean since i met you you've you've got more education you co-founded a charity you got married you had a boy you've achieved a lot well yes. done yeah well done yeah. Thank you I'm so much Gabby. Sure, I sure will continue to achieve. Yes. And, and you asked me about supporting your charity. You'll give me some information which I'll post on this interview for people who who would like to support your charity. I know you would like to reach out to some organizations in the UK. So hopefully this this interview will help to attract some attention and and you'll provide an email address as well which we'll put in the notes for this interview. Um Tell me just a little bit more about you Narao. Um your hobbies. Yes, thank you so much Gabby. Uh so my hobbies uh, one of the biggest hobby I always have on my heart is helping people. That's one of the biggest hobby I have. I always love I don't like someone uh roaming behind or near me like they are not smiling i always in a position to help even if i can't help them but at least i make them to smile and the other hobby is swimming since i was born with a place with a big river where we go to fetch water for our parents and that is where we don't have showers so you we go you shower by swimming and then you take the water to your, to our family and the other hobby is traveling i really like traveling as i have been traveling to some of the national park in tanzania when i was in the college and also i managed to travel to zanzibar uh with the boat that is one of the biggest adventure i did and also i managed to uh hike mount kilimanjaro to huru peak brilliant and yes. just on the swimming how long can you swim for do you know Yes, I swim uh, even 2 hours. I can swim. You can swim for 2 hours. Yes, yes. 2 hours continuing in water, I can do that. I love that swimming. 
Brilliant. And yeah. one more question. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Yeah, so I had the cow milk. That was it, just milk? Just milk, cow milk. The other thing, just it was hot. The, the milk were hot. Hot milk, okay. Yes. That, milk and cows are very important in your culture. Yes, there's no anywhere you can go. You know, sometimes when also I go to Arusha or anywhere, I normally go and I also have to find milk. I'm actually um, grown up with milk. Our parents and I, I can also milk the cow. So I can't actually live without milk normally. No, I can't. We are born where we just eat meat and milk. This is the biggest food in our tribe. Now at least people are just getting us some food in the villages, some vegetables, because, you know, we don't eat vegetables at all because uh, we believe that vegetables are for the cows and not for us. So for us, we just have milk and uh, meat, only that. But so now, now at least we can have you, some other things. You've been educated and... I'm sure you now understand that it is important to have fruits and vegetables. So do you have fruits and vegetables or, or do you still not have fruits and vegetables? Yes. You know what I'm doing, Gabby? Um, I do. I do. For me, I do have a vegetable and I really understand what are they, what are, what are the roles or important things on our body. So uh, I'm also using my time in the community and one of the, uh, next project that we are doing is we are supporting women to have small gardening, small gardening at home to make sure that they also change the food they are eating. Instead of every time having milk, having milk, sometimes they also have some vegetable and also eat with some ugali uh, or anything, but at least to have vegetable around. And I can always motivate them and give them the importance of having vegetable on their body. What about you? Are you eating vegetables? I do that a lot, Gabby. I do that a lot. I do that a lot. I do and that. One, I final, vegetables. one final question, Naral. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a son now. Mm -hmm. And he is Maasai. Mm -hmm. Are you going to bring him up differently to the way you were brought up? Yes, yes, I can absolutely, uh, I can 100% say, like, I'm going to make sure that he reach his dream. What he wished to accomplish, I just make sure that for sure he goes to that dream. Because I just know, um, I don't want him to pass where I have passed. Never. So I will always try my level best to make sure what he likes and what he prefers to be he be that kind of a person. And would you like to have many children? Yeah, not really. Not many children as the life now have already changed. Not like previous time, like my daddy now have like 37 kids. 37. It's not easy. Yeah, 37 kids. So now it's not very easy. Life now is very expensive. Like even having one kid taking to school and other things, it's not very easy. So, um, with agreement from my husband, maybe four or three, yeah. Even four or three sounds like a lot. Yeah, yeah. But you know, in Maasai, you can't avoid that. You can't avoid, like, we are trying our level best to make sure that we don't uh, automatically get out of the culture, but at least we always encourage, but not to, to make sure that we are in the right track. Not just because they are doing, but we also have to follow on our own ways of life. Naral, thank you very much for joining me today. It was yeah. a pleasure to interview you again after five years. Mm -hmm. And did you enjoy the interview? I enjoyed much. I enjoyed much. Most of the thing that I enjoyed the most is uh, I'm very happy to see Gabby again. and just to to know that uh, Gabby have already uh, motivated me a lot. Since we met 2018, he was one of the big person who was also motivating me to make sure that I never give up. 
uh, to make sure that I also get education because always education can help me to do what I can, I can wish to do. So I'm very happy for you, Gabby. And I just say like, may God bless you and your family. Bless you too. That's beautiful, yeah. Naral. A very, yeah. very beautiful thing to say. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, Asante Sana. What does that mean? Asante Sana means thank you so much. Thank you Asante, so much. Asante Sana. Yes, Asante Sana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Asante well, Sana. Well, one more question. When yes, I met yes. you, I interviewed your brother and your brother had been to London. Yes. What's your brother's name? Nadatu. Nadatu. Yes. And is he keeping well? Yes, now he's keeping well, but he's a bit now very far from me and he don't even have a phone right at the moment. He went with his family. So now I don't really see, I did not see him like uh, uh, six months ago. I did not see him, but I, I'm very sure he's doing well. And just because he went with his family. So I don't really know what's going on like six months now. How many children does Nadatu have now? Yeah, he's having six kids six, and six, two wives, yeah. Six kids and two wives. I think when I met him, he had one wife and maybe yeah. one or two children. Yeah, now he's six and you have another wife, the second wife. Okay. Yeah. Well, please send him my, my regards. Yeah, I will do that. I will do that. He will also, whenever I see him, I will, I will just give him also to watch the interview and I'm very sure he will much be happy. You know, sometime when we meet, he also asked me, have you ever talked with Gabby? How is Gabby doing? Yeah, so he also remember you a lot. Very nice. Yes. Okay, Naral, I, I, we've gone over time. So thank you so much again. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will do another interview in another year to see how yeah. you've progressed. Oh Would yeah. Like Would you like I will, that? Yeah, I will love that. I will love that. I will appreciate. Great. Yeah. Thank you.